Tesla just announced their Q1 earnings, and based on Elon's little tweet storm this morning, most people weren't expecting it to be great. Because typically if he's not in a great mood and he's complaining about stuff on Twitter the morning of an earnings call, it's not great. But it actually turned out to be pretty good, all things considered. In this last quarter, Tesla actually managed to be profitable. And that's better than they have been in most Q1s, and this one in particular is pretty impressive. So on the call, they got Elon talking about full self-driving quite a bit. And the first was him talking about how the car is much more capable than the software that it has right now, as far as full self-driving is concerned. He said they just put out that stop sign and traffic light recognition, and so far that's going well, and they're already at a million intersections that they're recognizing, and he said soon they're gonna be at one billion. And that's because everyone in the fleet that has this update and is doing these confirmations is actually labeling their neural network, which is essentially how Google works, and that's what he actually compared it to. He said Google is so far ahead of every other search engine that if you want to make a search engine, it's almost impossible to catch up because every day that someone uses Google, it's training their neural network. And that's exactly how Tesla's neural network is working right now. He said that soon it'll be able to go through these intersections on its own and it'll be able to make the turns that it needs to make. His opinion was that he is extremely confident that by the end of this year, the end of 2020, a Tesla will be able to drive you from home to work and back most of the time completely on its own. So of course this is Elon time and he himself said most of the time in that statement. So it's up for a little bit of leeway, but it's encouraging to still hear him be confident about this. And then lastly, something I'm pretty excited about is they talked about full self-driving subscriptions. So this is something people have wanted for a while because full self-driving right now, if you didn't buy it with the car, it's $7,000 and that's a lot. And I'm in that boat right now. I really want it, but it's $7,000 and right now isn't the time to be spending $7,000 for me. They reiterated that the best way to buy it is to buy it when you finance the car and pay for it monthly that way in the financing of the car. But they said by buying now, the functionality that you will be getting with that purchase will greatly exceed what you paid for it. But in any case, there's a lot of customers who lease a Tesla and don't wanna pay, which makes a lot of sense. And then customers who didn't get it at delivery that don't really wanna pay $7,000 and would rather get a monthly subscription. And they said that should be coming by the end of this year. Again, Elon time. I'm expecting it not to be by the end of this year. Maybe early next year would be great, but I would love to see it even sooner. And if you do the math, it could be quite a lot of money. A lot of people were saying maybe 20 bucks a month. But if you think about the life of a typical car, it's probably going to be close to like $100 or something. But we will see more about that hopefully by the end of this year. Now, there was some very interesting news about the Model S, which is that the Model S apparently already has a 400 mile range. Elon said the Model S for the last few months has had a 400 mile range. The EPA just tested it wrong. He said that apparently the EPA was testing it overnight and the door was ajar. So the Tesla the entire time was warning it that the door was open and it actually lost 2% of its range because of this, achieving that 391 miles of range. And that 391 is already their best range, but apparently, according to Elon, it actually has a 400 mile range, which is very encouraging. And that is that number Tesla and every electric car company is shooting for. So Elon said that when EPA testing opens back up, they're going to resubmit the Model S and they should achieve 400 miles. And that's very exciting to hear that they're already there before we even get to battery day. And speaking of battery day, Elon talked about how he's extremely excited for battery day. He said it's going to be the most important day in Tesla's history. So that's very encouraging. It now looks like it will be pushed back. He said the third week of May looks to be right. But he also said that's not a firm date and it's Elon time even saying that it's not a firm date, so it probably will be later. But I'm very excited to see what they're announcing there. He seemed very confident and very excited about that day. And then lastly, it seems that Elon kind of leaked where their next Gigafactory is gonna be. He said the battery day will either be in California or Texas. I didn't really say anything more about why he mentioned Texas. But then when someone asked when they will announce their next Gigafactory, he said it will be in the US and they could announce it in as little as a month. He said, at the most, certainly within three months. So it seems very likely that's gonna be Gigafactory Texas. It's definitely been rumored that it would be Gigafactory Texas. He seems excited about it. He kind of leaked that. It seems like it's gonna be Gigafactory Texas. Before the earnings were announced, Tesla closed at around $800. And now they're trading at around 873 in after hours trading, which is up about 9%. So definitely some positive Wall Street reactions there. The cash highlights are a $1.8 billion increase in their cash and cash equivalents in Q1 to 8.1 billion. And then regarding profitability, they had 283 million GAAP operating income, 
which was a 4.7% operating margin in Q1. Overall, Tesla's revenue was listed at $5.985 billion. And that's just a little more than what Wall Street had predicted at $5.85 billion. So as far as the net income is concerned, Tesla lists $16 million of net income. And one crazy thing is that they launched the Model Y in this first quarter, and the Model Y is already profitable. As far as operation highlights, Tesla talked about how they launched the Model Y in Q1, way ahead of schedule. They reached 391 miles in the range of the Model S without changing the battery capacity. And it says they reached production of 1,000 solar roofs in a single week. Now that wording is a little confusing. To me, it seems like they did that in one particular week. They proved that they could do it. They're not actually there every week yet, but that is their goal. Their total vehicle production for Q1 of 2020 was at 102,672. And the Model 3 and Model Y made up the vast majority of that production at 87,282 of those two cars. And then the smaller part of that was the Model S and X, which was 15,390. Now what's interesting is they made quite a bit more than they actually delivered, which could prove useful for Q2. Their total deliveries of all vehicles were 88,496 vehicles delivered. Of those, 76,266 were Model 3s and Model Ys, and then 12,230 of those were Model S's and X's. It looks like the overall deployment and production of solar went down. Storage deployment was at 260, and solar deployment was at 35. Now comparing that to a year ago in Q1, the overall storage deployment is actually better, but the solar deployment is down, and it's especially down from Q4. In Q4, storage deployment was at 530, and solar deployment was at 54. And then they added to their supercharger stations and said that they're specifically getting close to over 2,000 stations worldwide. Regarding production, they detailed how they're getting better and faster at it, specifically saying that with the Model Y, they were able to produce as many Model Ys in the first quarter as they were in the first two quarters when they started making the Model 3. The current production for each of their factories is also listed. At Fremont, it says Model S and Model X is currently at 90,000, and Model 3 and Model Y is at 400,000. But they do specifically say with the Model 3 and Y that installed capacity is gonna get up to 500,000 in 2020. In Shanghai, Model 3 production is up to 200,000 and Model Y is coming soon. And then of course there's no production for their Berlin factory which hasn't even broken official ground yet on the actual building. Then of course the Semi Roadster and Cybertruck have not begun production yet and those all say in development. Tesla says based on the current status of the Berlin factory, they're actually on track to deliver Model Ys from Giga Berlin in 2021. So that's very good news for anyone out in Europe who's wanting a Model Y. It looks like by the end of 2021 they'll start delivering them from that factory and we've known with a lot of clues that that is going to be their plan. They're not going to be shipping Model Ys from the US over there. They're going to wait until that factory is making them. Regarding full self-driving and autopilot, they detailed how at the end of Q1 they had already released to early access members the stop sign and traffic light recognition and braking. Then they detailed how they released this new dash cam feature and how it was very much requested by Tesla owners and now they have it where they can get into their car, they see a sentry mode event, they can view it right away on the screen. Regarding the battery and powertrain, they detail how they extended the range of the Model S and the Model X and how the Model Y's new heat pump using their new Octavalve is able to get almost the same range as the Model 3, even though it's about 10% heavier. Regarding solar roof and solar panels, they're planning to continue expanding that. And then they of course talked about how they're not entirely sure when their factory is gonna be able to reopen and how all the suppliers are gonna be affected and all of that, but they do have the capacity to exceed 500,000 vehicles this year. Regarding profitability for the future, they said, quote, while near term profit guidance is currently on hold, we believe we will achieve industry-leading operating margins and profitability with capacity expansion and localization plans underway. They talked about how in Q2 they're planning on ramping up production more of Model Y at Fremont, which has currently been shut down, and then ramping up Model 3 at Shanghai as well. For Model Y production in Shanghai and Berlin, both of those factories they say should be getting that car produced there by the end of 2021. And then unfortunately, the Tesla Semi has officially gotten a delay now. Tesla said they are shifting their first deliveries of the Tesla Semi to 2021. So we're hoping to see a few by the end of this year, 
but it does make sense that everything has been shut down and they were already going to be a little delayed, so now it's in 2021. Some of the specifics they detailed about the production updates that they've had on the Model Y have to do with the actual production and making of the car. They showed this side-by-side -side picture where on the Model 3, you can see the rear underbody has 70 pieces of metal. Compared with the Model Y, that same rear underbody piece that's just a little bit different is two pieces of metal. And their goal is to eventually make that a single piece. And you can see that right here in a little more detail with these other photos as well. So comparing vehicle deliveries from this Q1 compared to the last couple Q1s, it's definitely a lot better than they have done and very impressive for the current time we're in. And on top of that, the fact that even though it's tiny, that they were profitable is also a very good sign. So overall, the main highlights are that one, Tesla managed to be profitable during this crazy time when their factory has been shut down for the last month. It seems like the profit margins on the Model Y itself are gonna be very good because Tesla has figured out how to make that car more efficiently. They can make it faster and they can make it cheaper than the Model 3 and it's actually more expensive than the Model 3. Now, if you're looking for the Model Y out in Europe, you're probably gonna see that in 2021. It might be the end of 2021, but that is what they're planning on, is that first deliveries will be out of Giga Berlin in late 2021. On top of that, the Model Y out in Shanghai is gonna be coming out in 2021 as well. So that will be very interesting to see which countries actually get the Model Y from which country because by the end of 2021, there should be three separate factories making the Model Y, as well as the Model 3. And especially in Europe, hatchbacks are very popular, so we can expect the Model Y to be very popular over there. If you've been keeping up on my Model Y updates, I've had a lot of people ask about when it's gonna be coming to Europe, so that's what we're looking at. I kept saying probably they're gonna wait until Giga Berlin, and it looks like that is what they're actually planning on doing. No real timeline on the Roadster or Cybertruck, but it looks like the Tesla Semi is gonna have its first deliveries in 2021. Again, it could be that thing where it's the end of 2021 which would be quite a big delay since they're already pushing it back from 2020 but we'll see what happens definitely great news for tesla and very encouraging and it's also cool to be a part of those deliveries all those model y's that they listed delivered i was actually one of them and that's pretty exciting so i'll let you know if we hear anything more about product updates like the cybertruck and roadster on the actual earnings call itself. But overall, it was a great quarter for Tesla. I'm just really curious to see if they can carry this over and how long they're gonna be closed and all of those factors because it's very clear that Elon wants them to be open right away. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you're not already. Make sure to like this video if you appreciated it and I'll see you on the next one.